Hello everyone, uh, your boy Jeff here. Back in the VC again. I know it's been very intermittent for me, I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> just, uh, I don't know if I really explained. I think I may have made mention of it in past videos or not, but back in like end of February, like right before the coronavirus pandemic really took hold and started spreading <clears throat> I had um, one person at my work was fired and like the following week I think it was only a couple days after that actually another person someone who was my shift partner the previous year died unexpectedly and that really threw things uh, for a loop there because where I work it's a, it's a small plant and there's basically a skeleton crew so when you take two people out of that equation quickly uh, it kind of throws everything into chaos which is what I'm still dealing with now so um, I've been working this overtime schedule which means, you know, 60 hour weeks. Um, and it throws my shift pattern off. I'm basically on third shift, which is nights for two weeks straight. <clears throat> and then I flip around and um, to my afternoon shift for like a day or two. And then I'll, I'm on day shift for a week. And then I get like one or two days off unless I throw a vacation day in there somehow just to get time for myself to be off and it's decimated my listening time for records um, social interaction <laughs> throw the throw the corona thing you know the stay-at-home orders and everything like that into the mix and <clears throat> it just killed me as, as far as the VC goes. Um, I The last day or two I've, I've been starting to watch some videos and you know some contests that I'm thinking about getting into and um, a couple people have uh, mentioned me like Beth I just watched your video um, Beth at B-Side Records um, it was your contest entry for Z and uh, that was pretty heartfelt. You know, it was, I was pretty touching. And uh, same with David Newton. Um, so I, I felt a little, uh, not obligated, but I just wanted to come out here just to touch base with you guys and just to let you know I'm still here. <laughs> um, struggling, like I said, but, um, you know, it is what it is. Um, as of right now, I'm still working that schedule. I'm in the middle of the two weeks on third, which is really hard. And my wife is still working from home. So that's why I've been making these last several videos in the basement because she's upstairs right now at our dining room table working. <laughs> so um, that's... Uh, also prevented me from doing a lot of listening unless I put headphones on which is fine you know I don't mind listening to music on headphones but I prefer having the speakers so it is what it is and as we're heading into August there might be an end in sight um, because a third co-worker has been off on sick leave because he hurt his hand so it's been a shit show to be blunt <laughs> these last like what five months almost six months now we're closing on six months yeah 2020 has been a garbage year just a garbage year and i know it's been like that for everybody else too so i think <clears throat> when i <laughs> when the new year finally does roll around i'm gonna stay up Assuming I'm not working, 
I'm going to stay up not to see in the new year, but to make sure that this year leaves. <laughs> That's how bad it's been. <laughs> so, um, here we are five minutes in. All right. The topic of this video or the purpose of me coming out here besides rambling was just to show some of my recent finds because um, that's kind of really taken a nosedive too. I mean, I've gotten a few um, VCLT packages here and there, <clears throat> which I've shown. And um, as far as me buying records, that's really fell off the cliff too. But uh, last weekend, uh, for the first time since all of this started, I did a, a little digging. You know, I went to a half price and I found a couple of records there that I'd never seen before, so I had to get them. And there was also a record store, which was kind of far from my home, but uh, I went there anyway. My wife drove because she wanted to like get out of the house and just go somewhere and do something, excuse me. So she took me there. She said, go. Don't come out unless you have something. <laughs> Who am I to argue? I always, I always do what she tells me. So, you know, that's what I did. So, and I did get a couple of records that um, I had pre-ordered months ago that finally came through. Like this one here. This one has been making the rounds on the VC. And I am no exception. This is Fiona Apple's new album, Fetch the Bolt Cutters. Um, <clears throat> this will be a... This will probably show up, well, maybe, I don't know if I'll put this in the spin zone or not, since I'm showing it now. We'll see. <laughs> but, um, love this record. Um, haven't really paid much attention to Fiona Apple, to be honest, since her first record came out in the 90s. Um, but I heard some of the tracks, um, months ago. And, uh, I think it was Bill at the Vinylverse who... Um, shared one of them and I listened to it and I was like wow that's pretty good you know I really like that and uh, so when this album came up for a pre-order I figured what the hell I'll give it a shot so um, the music on this is great but uh, for those of you who have your vinyl copy and you haven't opened it yet please open and check your record because um, this is a two record set it's not a gatefold, which doesn't thrill me. But <clears throat> the records themselves were very dirty. They were very dusty. And I even found a couple of little hairs on them. And they came in paper sleeves, so the little bits of paper were stuck to the vinyl surface. And the first side, or side one, was um, kind of scuffed. So I ended up having to clean this as if it were almost uh, like a used record instead of a brand new one, which kind of disappointed me. It, it ended up being okay. I mean, it, the sound was fine. The, the scuffs didn't uh, damage the listening experience at all, but um, the quality control on this it may not be so hot. And a few other people that I've talked to had similar issues. So... Just be warned, I don't know where this was pressed. If I had to guess, I would say United. For those of you who are pressing press files or whatever, obsessed with that stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I was a little annoyed. And the, the cover, like, like, like here, you know, I got a couple of creases in the cover here. There's one down here, so, you know, I mean, here's the back just shows the song titles disappointing for a brand new record so but that does not take away from the quality of the music which is very very nice so there's that <clears throat> um, one of the records I found at the record store that I went to last weekend and I played this yesterday and I shared a, a clip on Instagram but the bad thing is those things expire after 24 hours, is uh, Lonnie Mac Live, Attack of the Killer V. Um, 
I had just finished reading Bitten by the Blues, which is a book about Alligator Records. And I remember reading about this album, which came out in 1990. Um... By Lonnie Mack, who I'm a fan of. I have uh, The Wham of That Memphis Man, which I remember way back. Uh, Andrew from Tales from the Crate showing it and talking it up. And I ended up uh, picking up a copy, and it's it's a great record. Um, so I knew of Lonnie Mack a little bit already. And fantastic guitarist. So I saw this at the record store. I just happened to catch it. So I bought it it's a you know the cover's got a cutout on it but the record itself is mint there he is with his flying bee this was recorded in 1989 at a place called Fitzgerald's which ironically enough I used to live down the street from back in like the early to mid 90s so I uh I didn't see this show though this had this was before I, I lived there but um I used to walk <laughs> used to walk to Fitzgerald's often and catch a lot of great shows there from, you know, NRBQ. I saw them several times there. I saw Duke Robillard there. Who else did I see? Coco Taylor, I think I saw her there before too. Just um blues, roots rock type bands. And um it was great because all I had to do was stumble home. I didn't have to worry about parking or my car or anything, and <laughs> it was awesome. But uh, the sound on this is great. The guitar playing is fantastic. Um, I actually have another Lonnie Mac album in the pipeline based off of that um, Alligator Records book. Uh, his comeback album with Alligator was called Strike Like Lightning, and I learned from the book that Stevie Ray Vaughan produced it and even did a little bit of playing on that record. So that was a must buy. So I found it on eBay and it's on the way. So that'll, that'll be showing up in a future video, but this one here it's live. And I honestly don't recognize any of the songs on it, but the playing on it is stellar. It's just, you know, there's a couple of slow burn blues on here. There's a couple of fast ones. It's a great mix of uh, music, fantastic guitar playing. So can't recommend this one enough for like a good time, <laughs> I, good time blues. Is there such a thing? More like house rock and music, which is what Alligator is known for. This is a great example. Attack of the Killer V by Lonnie Mack. Another album that I pre-ordered months ago and arrived this past week is the first album by PJ Harvey called Dry. Um, I'd mentioned for a long time now that I thought PJ Harvey, uh, her catalog deserved a vinyl treatment and it's just starting to get one. And this is starting with this album. This is her first record. So when I saw that they are uh, reissuing her stuff, some of it for the first time on vinyl, I'm all in. So um, they just put up to bring you my love, I think, for pre-order on Amazon. So that's already pre-ordered too. <laughs> Haven't played this yet. I just got it in the other day. Here's the back. But uh, PJ Harvey is one of my favorite uh, favorite artists. Usually one of my favorites from the '90s, but from any era. So I'm I'm a fan of hers, and I'm going to be picking up. All the records of hers that I don't have when they get reissued. So this will be pretty cool. Now, let's see if I can do this. Another, I'll do the, uh, the other Half Price Books records. Of which there are two. First one being the Tarney Spencer Band. Called Run For Your Life. Never saw this one in the wild before. The only reason I bought it was for this song right here, No Time to Lose. One of the great singles of the early 80s. I love that song. Wanted to have it on vinyl. That's why I bought this. I'm hoping the rest of this album is as good as that song. We shall see. 
And if you don't know, no time to lose, you can easily look it up on YouTube or Spotify. I think, I think it's on Spotify too. But um, yeah, this one I'll have to uh, tell you about because I only bought it for the one song, which I normally don't do. But um, like I said, just wanted to have it on vinyl. So, and it was cheap. It was like, uh, like four bucks, three ninety nine or something like that. So I bought it. Then another one that I was even more surprised to find because I'd never seen it before in the wild, but I'd heard about it was Daryl Hall's first album called Sacred Songs. Now, the interesting thing about this record is that it was produced by Robert Fripp. Now, I can't, I can't imagine what this is going to sound like. I'm, I'm hoping it's good because you've got Daryl Hall, who's a blue-eyed soul singer, you know, R&B guy, paired with a producer like Robert Fripp, who, you know, was the founder of King Crimson and does all of this hard, proggy, screaming guitar sound. I don't know if he plays, I don't know if he plays on this or not, but... <clears throat> I had heard about this record, I heard that it was good, and I'd never seen it before anywhere, so when I was doing my digging at half price and I came across it, I just grabbed it right away. Records in mint condition too, I almost didn't even need to clean it. Here's the back cover, and you can see it wasn't factory sealed when I got it, but I just left that sticker on there. It's on the cover. So this will be another one that you'll see in a future spin zone probably going to play this one hopefully play it here in the near future sacred songs by daryl hall okay and then the other two records that i found at the record store i got the Lonnie mac one and otis Redding, dock of the bay uh this one according to discogs is a early pressing from 68 i think and um, the record was, like I said, in, in mint condition. Mm, paid a little more than I expected to, but the guy gave me a, a deal on the Liney Mac and the other record that I'm going to show. So I paid full price for this one, and he knocked off money on the other one, which is fine. Um, I need more Otis Redding on vinyl, so because I don't have any. So this is my <laughs> this is my first. Uh, vinyl album of his that I can add to my collection. So of course, uh, sitting on the dock of the bay is, you know, probably his best known song. Um, I honestly don't know any of these other titles. I'm not as familiar with Otis Redding. I mean, I, I know a couple of his songs and I love his voice. I love the music. So I'm going to try and, and dive a little deeper into his catalog. So this can be a start of that. So I was pretty, pretty happy to come across this one, especially in such nice condition. And finally, um, yeah, the, the record store that I went to was okay. It was kind of small, kind of cramped. Everybody had masks on, including me, but I still tried to keep as much distance as I could, you know, from everybody else, just, just because. <clears throat> but the stock the guy had was just your basic hard rock, classic rock, a little bit of metal, you know, nothing too fancy or esoteric. So after doing a fairly routine flip through some of the bins, I went directly to the blues section, blues and jazz. And besides finding the Lonnie Mac record, I also found Sun Seals, which is another alligator artist. This is his record from 1976 called Midnight Sun. And like I said, based on that book that I had just finished reading, some of these guys were, were pretty fresh in my mind. So when I saw this, I grabbed it. I don't have any experience with this record. It's also got a cut corner, which I think was another reason why he gave me a little bit of a deal on it. Um, I've heard of Sun Seals but I don't really know of his music, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy this. I'll have to let you know. So, uh, yeah, 
He's a blues guy. And I like getting records, you know, especially on the Alligator label because they've yet to disappoint me with their releases. <laughs> so um, this one you'll see mentioned again in the future after I, after I play it. So there you go. That was my um, little... Uh, my little dig that I did last weekend and um, yeah it was kind of fun I missed it you know it, ordering records online you know like through eBay or Amazon or, where, or wherever else you get them is fine you know but uh, there's something about the thrill of the hunt you know when you come across a record that you weren't even sure you were looking for and you just get surprised by it and you're like oh I gotta get this that's the fun of going to an in-person record store but as you all know I'm not telling you guys anything you don't know but um, yeah it was fun and uh, hopefully can do maybe do that on a semi-regular basis again I don't know <laughs> I honestly don't even know when I have time to listen to these records that I just showed you I mean I, I listened to the first two and I kind of had to force it so it is what it is but <clears throat> just to let you guys all know I'm still here Still trying to make videos, still trying to watch. I'm sorry that I don't comment or, uh, on a lot of things. Even on people who comment on my videos, you know, I usually give the heart just to let you know that I saw it. But I'm going to try and do better. <laughs> you know, a lot of times I don't really know what to say. So, which is funny because I've been talking for 21 minutes. And, uh... I don't really know exactly how much I said, so <laughs> um, I'm going to try and do a couple of videos here today, this being the first, and um, we'll see how things go, but should hopefully have a few things for me here in the near future. So until then, thank you all for watching. Your boy Jeff, peace, and I will see you all again soon. Take care.